Matthew Bell with Alzheimer'sProof.com, and today I'm going to sort of pick up where I left off in another video. I installed the Guardian door blocker on the door going from the main house into the garage, and today I'm going to install the Defender. Now, the Defender is kind of an off-brand, if I understand correctly. I'm not an expert, so please, if you are a fan of the Defender or you work for Defender, don't, I, don't, I don't know if this is strictly correct. But the first one that I obtained was the Guardian. I had several of these that I installed. I installed one in an apartment that I lived in, a couple of uh, in a townhouse. I, I love the product, and I show in a different video how I install that. I actually have moved it from the top of the door down lower. And the main benefit of this, just to get this clear from the beginning, the main benefit of this product from an Alzheimer's proofing perspective is that it is going to help to prevent your loved one from eloping. Now, it sounds bad to say escape from the care environment, but that's essentially what we're talking about. We're talking about having to care for your loved one in a space where you know that they are going to be safe. And if they have the ability, more, even more than a child does, to open the door, to exit the house or other care environment without their caretaker or without you knowing it, recognizing it, then they can get injured, they could be killed, they could have something happen to them. So the whole point of this, i found, is that it can be a deterrent for them opening the door. Now I should say, and I say in the video on The Guardian, but I'll just kind of repeat it here in case you guys are, are tuning in without the benefit of seeing that other video, and that is that this product, the Defender, The Guardian, this door blocker, is designed in the first place as a theft deterrent meaning that when it is installed on the door, it is supposed to help to prevent forcible entry into the house so that even if a thief has jimmied the door or tried to defeat or successfully defeated a deadbolt or other lock, the idea is, is this door blocker will enable the door to be maintained in a closed position even if somebody tries to force their way inside. Now, from an Alzheimer's proofing perspective, however, I, I will point out several different things. Number one it will add another layer of security onto the door. Often, if you have it positioned high on the door, your loved one may not even recognize that the door blocker has been installed. Alzheimer's tends to diminish perception. And so I know in the case of my dad, I don't even think he recognized that the door blocker was on the door. But in addition to that, the door blocker has to be defeated or, or circumvented using a motion that, while it is not complicated, is not usual. And so a person with a cognitive deficit or a cognitive impairment like Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia may have reduced motor skills, reduced dexterity. And the third thing would be seniors often have reduced mobility. And so if you position it high on the door, it may be difficult for your loved one to even reach it. You also should be aware that it can hinder and will hinder your ability to exit the house in the event of a fire or other emergency, so you have to factor that in. I would say if you're going to use it as a deterrent to help prevent elopement, then you would want to activate it during those time periods that you thought were your loved one was at the highest risk for vacating the premises without you noticing it. But again, you have to be careful about where you install it and under what circumstances. I certainly cannot tell you that it's going to be safe or successful. I can only say that it was a tremendous help for me and my family, and I would just walk you through a couple of the installation procedures. But first, let me just show you some of the things that you're going to need to actually install it. Now, uh, un unboxing this, you can see this Defender security door blocker, and just opening it up. Obviously, we have our instruction manual. We have the actual door blocker, and you can see that it operates like on a hinge. Just kind of slide it, and it locks, and then we have the mounting hardware. So we have multiple screws. We have three long screws, which are going to be for driving it deep into the wood of a wood frame door. We've got four smaller metal screws. You can see those in there. So three large wood screws, four small metal screws. Now, the reason there's four of those is because in any application, whether it's a wood frame door or a metal frame door, you're going to use one of the small screws to position the thing. And if it's a metal frame door, then you can use the other smaller screws to drive the hardware into the metal frame. If it's a wood frame door, once you use the one 
one of those four metal screws to position it, the other three wood screws are going to drive this deep into the wood door frame so that it is secure. Here you can see the instruction sheet. And if you look at the top, you can see it says that you need to have, obviously, the Defender door blocker, the package of included screws, a drill with a 1 8 of an inch drill bit, Phillips screwdriver, and then the optional, possibly necessary tools are going to be a wood chisel, a hammer, and a center punch. So just to walk you through, here I have my drill. You can see I have the Phillips drill bit in the end. I have my set of drill bits. Basically, if you can see that, you can see there's a 1 8 inch drill bit in there. For some of the pilot holes, I'm actually going to use a 3 32nd inch drill bit, but the instructions indicate that we should use the 1 8 for the main wood screws. So those two, the drill does also indicate a Phillips screwdriver, although I'm going to use a drill for everything. Here's your box, and then the optional, you got the hammer, the wood chisel, and a center punch. I looked all over for my center punch. I couldn't find it. My dad would have said, you know, in a pinch you can use a Phillips if it has a, a nice tip on it. This one really doesn't. But there are other ways of, of getting that started. That's going to be for a metal door. I actually don't have that application. It's not going to be relevant here. The instructions on both sides, you can see, will be following. And then the only two things I would add is uh, safety goggles. Probably not a bad idea in case... You know, if you, even if you have a metal door and one of the screws just kind of skips off, it could bounce back and hit you. And then the tape measure, because one of the instructions indicates that you want to have the door blocker installed at least six inches from any pre-installed locking device. So you're probably going to want to have that. And then you can see the only other thing I'll add is here's the diagram on the door where it indicates if you have a doorknob or a deadbolt, that you need to have a six inch gap in between that and the door blocker and then there's this L-shaped area on the door where it's going to be permissible to install the door blocker. And we're going to so show you the same installation with a slightly different one. Here is my brand new Defender. Same kind of idea. The only difference that I can see really in terms of the hardware is that there's a third deep mounting screw and the little oval positioning screw is a little bit um, shorter. So apart from that you can see it, it's going to operate in the same way. Uh, it's going to slide, you know, the little latch is going to slide and that's in the lock position. So in the lock position we're going to slide this again in between the door and the door jam. and actually well, I, mean, I want to make sure I turn it the right way. Obviously you want the pad, this black pad, you want that to rest against the door. So the black pad is going to rest against the door, and then we're going to mount the plate against the door jam. And when it's opened, it's going to swing away. Once again, I'm just going to line it up with the light switch just to make it kind of easy. So the first step with the door shut and this locked or engaged, I'm going to reach around and I'm going to mark the position of this thing with a pencil. Now this one was a little trickier than the other one in the sense that I didn't have any access to the back to mark it. So essentially it looks like it slides all the way in and just simply rests where the pad is. So that's what I'm going to operate on as I try to install it right now. Alright, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but what I'm going to do is position the door blocker in place and then put the center screw into position it. Alright, I'm going to once again, I'm going to line it up with the do, uh, light switch which is over here making sure the pad is near the hardware now this this one just basically fits in as far as it can go so it, it, there's really no trick I'm going to mark the center position here just roughly that's my positioning screw and then you can you know mark the, the wood screws not really going to be necessary to mark those because once you've positioned the thing, it's going to be in place and we can just secure the longer wood screws using the metal of this thing as a guide. I'm going to use a 330 seconds to drive the pilot for the positioning screw. Now the instructions really don't indicate you need to pilot a positioning screw, but I do it just because it makes it easier. With that in place, I'm going to drive the pilot screw. I'm going to drive the positioning screw into place. 
Now with it in position, at least provisionally, we're going to try and latch it. And it latches. It's got some play to it. The door. I'm going to try and bring it out just a hair. I brought it out just a hair, and it's engaging and disengaging a lot easier now. So I'm going to leave it in that out position, and with that, I'm going to drive the uh, I'm going to drill the pilot screws for the wood screws that are going to mount it permanently in position. For these pilot holes, the instructions indicate to use a 1/8 inch drill bit. And now we're going to drive in the wood screws one at a time. Okay, we have it permanently installed, slides into position, now the door cannot be opened even if it is unlocked, release the latch, and the door moves freely. You see that the latch stays in this unlocked position to enable the door to swing open and shut without any problem, and we can permanently latch it for extra security as well as for Alzheimer's proofing deterrence. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you found something of use in this video, please like it, please subscribe to the channel, please click the notification bell, and you'll be alerted to new content as it becomes available. I'm going to continue the series on Alzheimer's proofing the home with other interventions. I'll show you, you can see in the back there, the double keyed door lock a deadbolt. I'll show you the installation of that. We're also going to show you the hack of changing the position of the lock on the storm door. I'll show you in another video I have on swapping locks in a hall with a hall, a closet, and a bathroom door in order to prevent a person from locking him or herself in the bathroom. I have a number of other videos on herbal supplements, on pharmaceuticals, videos on long-term care insurance, life insurance, and how it can be used to pay for long-term care. And uh, I invite you to check those out. Also, don't forget to visit my website at uh, www.alzheimersproof.com, and I'll have a link in the description for that. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all the best in your attempts to care for your loved ones.